Today we're going to learn about converting conic sections to standard form. Now, uh, in order to understand uh, how to convert a conic section into standard form, we got to kind of understand, well, what are we converting it from? And uh, this is kind of an idea of what we're converting it from. Um, this is known as uh, the general form of, uh, of a conic section. And, uh, and so what we'd like to do, the problem is with this, is that uh, in the general form, it's very difficult to graph a conic section. So there are some standard forms, which I believe you've seen before. Um, and if not, you can go look. Uh, uh, the formulas are out there. Um, and uh, uh, anyways, uh, we're going to go ahead. We'll, we'll see what the formulas look like. We're going to convert one of these into uh, the standard form, and then you'll see the formula. Now, the first example that we're going to look at is going to be for a parabola. Um, this looks a little different from the parabolas that we've seen in the past. Usually we see a Y here, and then we see X's over here. So those parabolas were always a vertical type of parabola. They opened up or down. This parabola is a sideways parabola, and it'll open up either to the right or to the left. Um, let's go ahead. And let's uh, complete the square on this guy. Um, by completing the square, we can put this in standard form. So the first thing we'll do is we'll say, um, well, x equals. And uh, then we'll take these first two guys, uh, y squared minus 14y. And we'll say to ourselves, hey, it would be really nice if this was a perfect square. If we had uh, another thing here um, that made this into a perfect square trinomial, then we could write this as a binomial squared. Um, so what number goes in this blank? Uh, I'm kind of hoping that maybe you might remember from the last time we did completing the square. Um, I'm going to pause the video for you pause the video for just a second. See if you can remember what number goes in there. Okay, hopefully the, uh, you agree with me. The correct number that goes in here should be 49. And if you don't remember where I got the 49 from, it, what we do is we take this number, we take the uh, negative 14, we divide it by 2, and then we square it. And since we square the whole thing, including the negative sign, um, we always get a positive number here. All right, and then what we'll do is we'll continue on and we will add uh, the 25 on just like we did before. Um, now, there's one little problem here. This 49 that we're adding, it's not really legal. Um, we, uh, nobody said that we're allowed to do that. So to make this more legal, we're going to go ahead and subtract off that 49 over here as well. So since we're adding 49 and subtracting 49 on the same side of the equal sign, um, it's as though we're adding 0, and that doesn't change anything at all. Now, we can uh, now rewrite this stuff in parentheses. We can rewrite this as a binomial squared. And again, why don't you pause the video for a moment and see if you remember how to write this as a binomial squared. Hopefully you agree with me that this is y minus 7, uh, parentheses, squared. And, uh, and again, if I take y minus 7 and FOIL it times y minus 7, I should get y squared minus 14y plus 49. Um, 25 minus 49, that's uh, negative 24. And voila! That's it. Believe it or not, we are done. That's all we really had to do was just, uh, uh, we just had to write this thing in this form. This is called standard form. That's it. Now, um, there, there was a name that we used for this in the past. We called this vertex form. And uh, I'm going to remind you of why that is. Because when we are looking at uh, something like this, uh, if we see x equals a times y minus uh, k, and that is squared uh, plus h, 
Um, if this is a the parabola, and this is, um, we know that this, the vertex of the parabola is going to be at h, comma, k. So that's why we called this guy vertex form before. Now, um, in this case, our a, uh, we also know a little bit about the a. The a is 1, and since it's positive, uh, this parabola, it's going to open up to the right. And you don't have to take my word for that. You could make a table, plug in some values for y, calculate the values for x, and you'll see that you get a graph that opens up to the right. I don't know if the vertex is on the y-axis, um, but, uh, but certainly we'll get a parabola that opens to the right h and k, the vertex of our parabola, that's going to be at, in our case, minus 7 minus k, so that uh, the, our, our k must be 7. And then uh, minus 24 plus h, so our h must be minus 24. And that's it. That's where our vertex is for this parabola. So um, if, we, if we put this in a table, we could then easily graph the rest of this parabola. So that first example was a nice little warmer upper because all we had to do was complete the square one time. Hopefully you recall that. Um, now we're going to take a look at a slightly more interesting example. And in this particular case, we're actually going to have to complete the square twice. So this is something new. Let's take a look and see what's required here. Um, first of all, we're going to gather up all of the x terms, x squared minus 4x. And we're going to prepare ourselves for having to add a little something extra. And that will be the square that we're trying to complete. Um, and then we'll also do a plus y squared, and we'll do plus 8y, and then um, we'll leave room for a little bit extra. And, uh, and then we'll move that 5 to the other side of the equal sign. So that'll be a 5 over here, um, plus 5, 0 plus 5 is 5. Um, and then to balance out this equation, since we've added something, since we're going to add something new here and here, we have to add to the other side of the equation something to balance those guys. Now over here, hopefully you remember what goes in that blank. Um, and over here, I hope you remember as well. Take a moment and pause the video and see if you can remember what to fill in this blank and this blank. And hopefully you agree with me that what goes in this blank is going to be a 4, positive 4, um, because we take this 4 divided by 2 and then we square it. And then hopefully what you agree with me that what goes in this blank is 16, because we take this 8 divided by 2 and then square it. And then to balance this out, we'll also add the 4 and we'll add the 16 onto the right as well. Now, we should be able to, in our next step, we should be able to go ahead and we'll complete the square here. We'll write this as a binomial squared. That'll be x minus 2 squared. And I feel bad. I rushed a little bit. Um, I didn't give you a chance to try it on your own. Why don't you try this one here? Pause the video for a moment and see if you can remember how to write this out as a binomial squared. All right, let's go ahead and try. So this is going to be y plus 4 squared. And then over here, we'll do 5 plus 4 is 9 plus 16 is 25. And it turns out that this particular guy, it's beginning to look a bit either like a circle or an ellipse, if you recall the standard forms of those types of conic sections. Um, the, the reason why I'm suspicious this is a circle is because there's no number in front of the y and there's no number in front of the x um, or even out in front of the parentheses of either. So this is just an x squared and a y squared and it's set equal to some number. So this number that we see over here, um, this guy is going to be our r squared. So we'll know that about our circle. And in fact, I believe we're actually done. Um, this, is the, this is the standard form for a circle. So we'll go ahead and we'll box that. And we'll say yippee. That was not so horrible. And let me see if I can...
Okay, so here is our standard form. Now, um, uh, let's add a couple of things to this. Let's identify the fact that this is a circle. And um, a couple other easy pieces of information here. We already talked about the R squared. Since R squared is 25, um, that means that R, or the radius of the circle, is going to be equal to 5, or the square root of 25. And the other thing that we know is that the center of the circle is at H comma K. And again, let's take a look at the, the, the actual standard form so that we can compare to what we see here. So if the standard form of a circle is x minus h squared plus y minus k squared, and that equals r squared, um, and here we have x minus 2, then our h must be 2. So we can go ahead and write that. Um, here we go. So we're going to have uh, the center of our circle is going to be at 2 comma something. And y minus k, we have y plus 4. So if you recall, what this means is this is a lot like y minus a negative 4. So our k is going to be negative 4. And so we know we have a circle with a radius 5 centered at 2 comma negative 4. That could be graphed. I don't know about you, but I'm having fun, so I'm thinking, let's try another one. Now, again, in this particular example, we'll kind of take it up a notch. There's a little bit extra stuff to do here um, that we haven't done recently before. Again, we're going to do completing the square twice, like we just did for the circle. Um, let's go ahead and write this out. So we'll gather up our x's, x squared plus 4x. Um, plus, we'll leave a little room first, just in case we want to put something extra in there. And then the other thing we'll do is, this time I'm going to do something a little different. See the 4y squared and the minus 24y? I'm going to write this as 4 times parentheses y squared minus 6y plus blank. Now, the reason why I do, what I did what I did here is I factored out a 4 from in front of the y squared. You can uh, when you're completing the square, you cannot have a number in front of the squared part. And uh, when I factored out the 4, I also factored out the 4 from the negative 24. So that leaves me with 4 times the quantity y squared minus 6y. Now, uh, I'm, I want to complete the square here. So whatever I do, I'm going to be multiplying that 4 times that eventually. Um, and then we have plus 24 left over. So I'll write equals and then negative 24. We move the 24 to the other side and make it negative. And then, what, then to balance this equation, since I'm adding a blank here and I'm adding a blank here that's times 4, uh, to balance that I must add a blank on the other side and also add a blank that is multiplied times 4 on the other side as well. Now this and this make it so that it's legal for me to add these numbers here. Now once again um, it would be nice if you could come up with what goes in the blank there and what goes in the blank there and if you want to pause it um, go ahead and do that and then you you fill in those numbers. So hopefully you agree with me that a 4 goes here that's 4 divided by 2 squared and over here it should be a 9 and again that's negative 6 divided by 2 squared negative 3 in parentheses squared that's 9 and then over here we put a 4 <clears throat> and here we put in a 9 and again this 4 and this 4 times 9 balances the 4 and the 4 times 9 that we added over here now let's go ahead and complete the square and again, but before I go and do this for you, it'd be kind of nice if you paused the video and you tried it for yourself. So here I go. x plus 2 squared plus, um, here's 4 times, uh, this guy turns out to be y minus 3 squared and then that is equal to negative 24 plus 4, that's negative 20 and then plus 36 so that'll be 16. Now in this particular case unlike the last example we this is not going to be a circle looks like it but it's not 
The problem is, is we have this 4 out in front. And if this was a circle, the numbers out in front of the y squared parentheses and the x squared parentheses would be the same. And in this case, there's a 4 here and a 1 here. They're different numbers. So what we're going to do is this. Uh, I'm going to remind you of the standard form uh, of the equation for an ellipse. It looks a bit like this. So you'll notice that in this equation, we have a 1 on the right-hand side. In order to get that 1, what we'll do is we'll take the 16 and we'll divide it through by 16. Now, if you recall the basic rules of algebra, if we want to do something to one side of equation, it's only legal if we do it to the other side as well. And uh, when we have terms, and this is one big term, and this is one big term, we can divide each term individually. So this guy here will divide by 16, and this guy here will divide by 16. And then in the end, let's go ahead and clean this up. Uh, so this will be x plus 2 quantity squared over 16. And then that is plus, uh, this 4 and this 16 cancel. So that's going to be y minus 3 quantity squared over 4. And then that equals 1. Now, this is the standard form for an ellipse. And uh, since we recognize that, by the way, um, uh, again, just to test your skill, is this a horizontal or a vertical ellipse? Well, we need to remind ourselves that uh, if we have the... Um, if we have the larger number under the x, then this must be a horizontal ellipse. If we have the larger number under the y, then this must be a vertical ellipse. So in this case, this guy must be horizontal. Larger number is under the x. And, uh, and then the other thing is um, we can identify where the center of this ellipse is. The center of this guy is going to be at h, comma k. There, there that is again, h comma k. And again, uh, the, the standard form of the ellipse is x minus h and y minus k. So uh, the y minus 3 means that k is 3. So we'll write that like so. k, k. And then um, over here, x minus a negative 2. So our h is going to be negative 2. So we have a horizontal ellipse with a center at negative 2 comma 3. And the other thing we know is that the uh, major axis, uh, first of all, a, th this is a squared, the 16. So our a is going to be equal to 4. And that means that our major axis, uh, or uh, the end-to-end -end measurement of the ellipse, is going to be um, 2 times this. Um, hopefully you recall that from what we saw in the lab. So 2 times 4, that gets me 8. So this ellipse, um, we would go, if we wanted to draw this, we would go from the center point, we would go 4 to the right and 4 to the left, and that would give us the two endpoints for the ellipse. Our uh, minor axis is b, um, and we get that from this b squared here. Remember, b squared. So our b equals 2. And so our minor axis, or the distance from the bottom to the top of the ellipse, that is going to be um, 2 times this. The total distance from the top to bottom will be 4. So again, if, we're, if we start at the center point and we go up 2 and down 2, um, then, then we will have the point for the top of the ellipse and the bottom of the ellipse. And from that, we can graph the entire ellipse. Okay, so let's take a look at another example. And in this example, we're going to have a little bit more that we have to do than before, just a little bit more. Um, we've got the 2x squared minus 8x. So again, I'm going to factor out the 2. So we'll have 2x squared minus 8x. That's going to be minus 4x. The reason why is because 2 times negative 4x is negative 8x. And then plus, leave room for a blank. And then uh, minus here, notice that's minus 4y squared. So we'll do minus 4 times parentheses y squared. Um, negative 4 to get negative 24 is going to be plus 6y. And then we'll leave room for a blank. 
and then of course we move this negative 16 to the other side 16 plus 2 times blank and uh, this is minus 4 times blank so minus 4 times blank and again it'd be nice if you could pause the video and see if you can figure out what goes in that blank and what goes in that blank I'm gonna go ahead and get going this is uh, we're gonna put a 4 here and we'll put a 9 here remember 6 divided by 2 squared that 6 divided by 2 is 3 squared is 9 so a 4 goes here and a 9 goes here and let's go ahead and write this out so this is going to be 2 times uh, x minus 2 squared uh, minus 4 times if you want to try to do the factoring on that that would be great um, I get y plus 3 squared and that's equal to all of this stuff over here <clears throat> and over here on the right hand side we get negative 12 16 plus 8 is 24 minus 36 negative 12 now this negative 12 creates a bit of a dilemma um, because let's take a look at the state uh, by the way what do we think we have here what type of conic section um, it by process of elimination alone hopefully you figured out that we're down to the hyperbola the other thing is, is since we have x minus y um, uh, instead of x plus y, it's got to be a hyperbola. That's the only one where the x is subtracting the y or the y is subtracting the x. So the, the problem is, is we've got this negative 12. And so what we're going to do is, uh, uh, well, let's take a look at the standard form just for a sec. So this is the standard form for a hyperbola. And by the way, let me make note that this is a horizontal hyperbola because it's x minus y. If it was y minus x, it would be a vertical hyperbola. But the important thing to note is that we have a 1 over here on the right. Now the problem is, is that when I go and divide by negative 12 here and here, you're going to see something interesting happens. So we'll divide by negative 12. That gets me a 1 on the right. And we'll divide this term by negative 12. And we'll divide this term by a negative 12. And when we do all that dividing, what we end up with is, uh, is that this guy's the negative term and this guy's the positive term. So I'm going to switch them around. So what we really end up with, 4 and 12 cancels, that gets me 3. So over here I'll have y plus 3 squared all over uh, that's 3 down below and then we're gonna subtract because this is positive so that's why I put that there and and 2 divided by negative 12 that's negative so that gets us x minus 2 squared all over <clears throat> 6 because 2 and 12 cancels and then finally that gets me 1. Now since I have y minus x, this is clearly going to be a vertical hyperbola. So we can go ahead and make note of that. Um, let's go ahead and write that down. This is a vertical hyperbola. And uh, we know a few things about it. We know that the hyperbola is centered at uh, h comma k, and uh, and we will have this will be our h and this will be our k. So it's going to be um, our h is going to be two, and our k is going to be minus three, negative three, and that gets us our center of our hy hyperbola. And let's remind ourselves exactly what the graph of a, a vertical hyperbola looks like. Um, it looks a bit like this. Um, that's the uh, major transverse axis. And uh, what we do, it looks a little bit like a, a parabola going up and a parabola going down. And so the, our center is going to be um, at 2, the center of that guy is going to be at 2 comma negative 3. Now, we know a couple of other things. We also know that the distance from the center to either vertex is going to be the number under the term that's subtracting. 
So our A here, or our distance from the center to the vertex, is going to be, this is A squared, so uh, our A is going to be square root of 3. And that'll be the distance from the center to that vertex and the distance from the center to that vertex. And of course, don't forget, we also have um, this other thing called the foci. And the way that we can get the foci is c squared is equal to a squared plus b squared. And this is a squared and this is b squared. So it turns out that uh, if we add those together, we get 9. And if we take the square root of both sides, we get c equals 3. And our c tells us how far from the center. And again, just to remind you, um, uh, hyperbolas have a focus point here. And they have another focus point here. And the distance from the center to either focus is going to be this distance, 3. So from here to here is 3, and from here to here is 3. So, not only were we able to write the hyperbola in standard form, but we can extract all this information necessary to graph the hyperbola. Good job. Now let's get to work and do some practice.